What's going on guys, it's Jeff for Mad Hatter's Reef and today we're going to be taking a look at the top 10 soft corals for your roof tank. So today's video I actually wanted to do something different. I wanted to talk to you guys about my Neptune Systems dose and something that I actually did wrong with that but I'm going to be covering that in next week's video because uh, I didn't have time to film everything and get it done. But I did reach out to you guys and I asked you what you wanted to see for today's video and I gave you a couple ideas for a top 10 list and you guys overwhelmingly voted for soft corals. So that's what we're gonna take a look at today but before we jump into that, a couple other things that we're gonna be doing on today's video, we're gonna be giving away the Finex LED uh, that I reviewed for Premium Aquatics last week. And I'm also gonna tell you how you can win yourself the Aquamai KPS Powerhead for next week. So if this is your first time being here, this is where I talk about everything reef tank related. So if you love reef tanks like I do, smash that subscribe button. Hey guys, I just want to cover a couple things before we jump into this list. If you have been in the hobby for a couple of years, this probably isn't going to be the list for you. This is for the people that are just starting out in the hobby that are looking to make that jump from a fish only with live rock to keeping an actual reef tank. And one thing to keep in mind with soft corals is they don't offer you a ton of variety as far as coloration and growth patterns. But they do serve that kind of intermediate place where people are kind of starting to figure things out and take that next step in reef keeping. Now all the corals that are on this list I've kept in my own tanks. And as for my 220 gallon, I only actually have one soft coral in it and it's a Rodactus that is lovingly named the Mad Hatter. Although I have moved away from soft corals, I have spent a number of years keeping them and there are some beautiful soft corals out there and this list is really for the person that's looking to take the next step in reef keeping and find some success as well as have some interesting things in their tank so let's jump into it coming in at number 10 number 10 is the pom-pom xenia now this xenia comes in a couple different colorations it comes in a pink a white and a reddish coloration and at one point in the hobby this was considered the holy grail of reef keeping if you could keep xenia alive in your tank you were definitely considered a top-notch reef keeper but with the advancements of reef keeping this is actually a coral that can grow out of control if left unchecked this was one of the very first corals that i ever kept this was also one of the very first corals that i ever fragged and it grew so crazy in my tank that i actually would just rip it off the rocks and attach it to a frag plug with an elastic band and it would continue to grow coming in at number nine coming in at number nine is the superman mushroom now there are going to be a couple of different mushrooms on this list and this is probably one of my favorite now the superman mushroom is probably my favorite of the discosoma variety and i would say my second favorite would probably be the watermelon mushroom uh, but the superman mushroom is definitely a unique coloration uh, with its red base and blue dots this soft coral prefers low light and low flow so it's a really great coral to fill in those dark shaded spots in your reef tank and the unique thing about this coral is it likes to move around in the tank and usually what it will do is leave a little piece of its foot behind which will grow into an entirely new mushroom coral coming in at number eight coming in at the number eight spot is the blue clove polyp what i love about these corals they look like little snowflakes uh, and they have this very similar growth pattern as zoanthids and are very vivid in their coloration there's a couple different morphs out there that offer different colors but the blue one by far is one of my favorites even though this is a very beautiful coral it also can become a little bit of a nuisance if it's left unchecked this coral has been known to self-frag and redistribute itself throughout a reef tank much like green star polyps this coral can also grow on glass plastic just about any surface that's under the water this is definitely a coral that can fill in those empty spots in your aquascape but it's definitely a coral that can get out of control if it's not managed coming in at number seven coming in at the number seven spot is the grandis paleotha 10 years ago if you would have tried to give me this coral i probably wouldn't even have taken it from you it didn't appeal to me but after being in the hobby for 10 years i don't know what it is but this coral is pretty stunning to me now 
I was at MACNA this past year in Louisiana, and I, the very first tank that you walked up to, I, th- I believe it was in the max spec section, uh, they had a little colony of these guys, and they looked absolutely amazing. The actual polyp on these pallies is pretty huge. It's probably about the size of a silver dollar. A beautiful coral that does come with a warning label. They do contain paleotoxin, which is incredibly toxic to humans, dogs, children so it's definitely something that needs to be handled with care so you definitely want to do your research coming in at number six coming in at the number six spot is the green finger leather now this is a coral that is very beautiful but it also has some variations out there that are not so good looking this coral can get very large in size and usually prefers to be in the top half of your live rock It's also a great coral to start fragging. It's as simple as taking a piece out, cutting a finger off from the coral, and then attaching it to a plug or a piece of live rock with a rubber band. This is a coral that can definitely be a showpiece in any soft coral reef tank. Coming in at number five. Coming in at the number five spot, another mushroom of the genius Recordia Florida. Not to be confused with its close cousin, the Yuma mushroom. This mushroom is a beautiful addition to any reef tank, let alone a soft coral reef tank. They come in a number of colorations such as green, blue, orange, teal, and this mixture rainbowish style, which can add some serious colors to your reef tank. This coral prefers medium lighting as well as medium to low flow. And one of the best things about this coral is it's responsive to feeding. And once you tried it and realized that you like the Fiji corals, it's actually a very common thing to do with LPS corals. So it's kind of a gateway coral. Coming in at number four. Coming in at the number four spot is the Toadstool Leather. Now this is probably my favorite leather coral out of all the soft corals that are out there. One thing to keep in mind with these corals is they can grow to be absolutely massive. They prefer medium lighting and medium flow and they really are a coral that should be placed in the top section of your aquascape. One warning with this coral is it likes to shed its skin about once a month so it'll look pretty rough for a couple of days and then it'll be much better after this mucus layer comes off from it and in the end is a sign of good health. Coming in at number three. Coming in at number three is one of my most favorite soft corals in the hobby to date and it is called the African Blue Xenia. The interesting thing about this coral is it is not from Africa and it's not even a Xenia, which makes it kind of interesting that it's called the African Blue Xenia. This coral is in fact a suspicularia that is from Australia. But all that aside, this is actually a absolutely beautiful coral and I had this in my very first tank and I paid an extremely large amount of money for this coral. One of the downsides of this coral is it doesn't ship very well, but if you can get your hands on some and it become established in your reef tank, it actually can become very aggressive and almost become a weed in your tank. I remember in my 55 gallon, I was pulling this stuff off the glass and throwing it into a bucket at one point and giving it away to friends. Coming in at number two. Coming in at number two is zoanthids. Now this coral all on its own could actually have its own top 10 list due to the fact of the number of morphs that are in this genre of coral. Now a morph is basically a change in coloration within the species. Zoanthids are a great addition to any reef tank and can really help fill in those negative spots within the aquascape. And again, a word of caution, zoanthids do contain paleotoxins, which are very dangerous to humans pets, children. So make sure you educate yourself on how to properly handle this animal. Coming in at number one. Coming in at the number one spot is another mushroom. Now this is a soft coral that, oh, somebody that's just starting out in the hobby to somebody that's been in the hobby for a number of years can appreciate. The Redactus line of mushrooms has some of the most beautiful soft corals in the hobby. The Redactus mushroom prefers medium to low flow and medium lighting. This is a soft coral that is extremely hardy and is a great coral to consider for somebody who's just starting out in the hobby. And a soft coral such as this Sunsplash Redactus is a coral that you'll appreciate the entire time that you're in the hobby. All right, guys, so now we're going to pick the winner for the Phoenix LED light. And we have uploaded our video. Click in the button. Drum roll. Clanner, you have won yourself the LED. So, Clanner, I'll be reaching out to you via Premium Aquatics, and congratulations.
All right, guys, that's going to do it. Congratulations to the winner of the Finex Marine 2. And if you want to win yourself the Akamai KPS Powerhead, there's a link down in the description below. It's going to take you to the video where I reviewed the KPS. And all you need to do is make sure you're a subscriber to Premium Aquatics, hit the like button, and leave a comment on the video. I want to thank all my supporters on Patreon for supporting the Mad Hatter's Reef Project. And if you would like to support the Mad Hatter's Reef Project, there is a link down in the description below. That's going to do it for today, guys. I want to thank you for joining me if you enjoyed this video hit the thumbs up and i'll see you guys next time right here with a brand new video